back to Kitchen Stew Worship Service Online. I'm so glad you're here today. Well, let's get started. If you need to use the bathroom or you need a quick water break, pause the video and quickly do that. If not, let's get started for service today. It's the beginning of August. So I'm so excited you're here. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you are with us during this season. God, in the midst of the unknown, whether um, how school is going to start or what our work life is going to be for our parents, Father, help us to trust in you and depend on you more than ever. Lord, let us know that you are in control and that we will wait for you until you make all things new again. Lord, so let us depend on you and let us trust in you, God, and let us wait on you. Let us persevere during this time, but let us also grow deeper in your love, knowing that even if the world is shaken up, that you are not shaken up, God, that you are faithful and you are sovereign and you are good and you are in control of all things. So we praise you and we worship you today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. Well, let's get started and let's stand up for worship. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand.
All right, it's time for offering. So let's take it out from a chair, backpack, Bible, from your parent maybe, wherever it may be. So remember, you got your offering, two hands in respect. You can say a small prayer before you pull it in. So let's start. God, thank you for keeping everyone safe even through this pandemic. Please help your word to be shared even through COVID-19. Please use this offering to grow our church and be used for your glory and good. Please help us to learn more about you and help us to trust you in all we do. Help us to remember that the cost of following you is huge and we must be willing to give up our lives. Please enter the Holy Spirit into our hearts so we can take up our own cross and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Daniel, for your offering prayer. Thank you guys for sending out your offering prayers. We need more, uh, especially during this month of August. We, I just received few, but would love to get more. Um, just a couple announcements for today. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed VBS last week. It was really awesome. And Zoom time was so good to see you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, hanging out with your VBS leaders. Let's pray and hope that they'll continue to join our ministry. And also, guys, if you missed out, if you're away, if it was just a busy week for you, don't worry. It's on YouTube and it's just Church Every Day Online VBS, the Good News Network. So just go and look for that and you'll find it. If you just go to our website, I'm sure it'll be on there as well. So 
check it out if you haven't been able to do it. It's still there, it's still saved. If you wanna watch it again, you can do that as well. Well, today we also have Zoom and it will be at 1.30 today, our usual schedule. And it's gonna be actually an interesting topic that we're gonna talk about. It's gonna be about Christianity and other spirits or other new age beliefs. Now, though that word might be new to you, but it's actually kind of encompassing this whole subject about psychics and astrology and even like scary movies and, and what does God say? What does the Bible say? You may believe that I know it's bad and I should have looked into it and stuff like that, but you may not know why. You may not know the reason. What does the Bible say about? And actually there's a lot of verses on it and, and it's really important that you do know why because in LA, it's a very big thing. In LA and actually in around our town, you might see those buildings, psychic readings and stuff like that. So this is a very interesting topic. So I hope you join us at 1.30. And the week after, we're gonna actually talk about more interesting topics called just racism and social issues. Now that one, I'm gonna need your parents' uh, signature and waiver form for the topics we have so they at least know what we're gonna talk about. And then the week after that, we will have no Zoom because we are going to have a sixth grade graduation, um, somewhat like a picnic party. I'm going to have it at a park. And if you can join, you know, if you can just have to stop by like a drive through if you just want to stop by, no problem. Just stop by, wear your mask. I'm gonna have a treat for you and a gift for you and a, your teacher will be there to say hi to you and some of your students will be there to, to say hi to you too. But if you can stay just for a little bit, we'll have our, you can bring a chair, you can bring a blanket and we're gonna sit six feet apart from each other and just chat and encourage each other and especially encourage you as you move on to Roots. So these are for our sixth graders. Um, the sixth grade girls will be from, I put it here, from one to two, and then our boys will be from two to three. So we want to separate the amount of kids coming in, but if you cannot make it in terms of staying there for an hour, just stop by, and we just want to bless you, we want to pray for you, and we want to give you a wonderful present. I'm sure you know what it is. Um, so I hope you guys come and get it. It's going to it's gonna be a really nice time. So that will be August 16 on a Sunday. So for all sixth graders, boys and girls, for you guys, and I hope you guys join us. And let's continue um, studying the Word of God and let's continue doing our sermon notes. I have sent out to you guys um, your just a little Bible verse about overcoming fear. You know, I, I listed about 50 here. But I found like over a hundred verses about overcoming fear. I mean, God really wants us to know that you don't have to be scared. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be anxious, but trust in the Lord. This is how much God loves us that he repeats himself over and over and over again. So I kind of wrote down just 50 of them here, but there's a lot more. And when you get this, you know, these are just your sermon notes and your discussion notes. So please, I hope you guys continue doing that. You guys have been awesome doing that. And I hope once we get back to church, I'm able to see your work. And, and I hope you guys put in like a nice binder or a nice folder so that your teachers can see the work that you have done. So let's keep praying and let's keep depending on God during this season. So let's open up our Bible to Luke chapter 12. Now, if you have this yellow um, ESV Bible, it is page 871. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes. You can pause it here to grab your Bible or to open it, uh, but don't be distracted. So let's stay focused. So Luke chapter 12. If you're there, just hold your Bible out there. Have your sermon notes ready on your side. So that will be really good. And um, let's do a quick review um, with our sermon message from last week, but also the Bible verse that we've been learning for the couple of weeks. So let's read this together. I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. John 14, verse 25 to 26. So this is just a quick reminder that Jesus is teaching us about prayer, about following Jesus, right? The cost of following Jesus. And he's 
able to do this because he's saying that the Holy Spirit will come and fill you and be your counsel, will guide you through it. We cannot do it on our own strength, guys. I know I can't. So every morning when I pray, I ask for the Holy Spirit to come into my heart, to fill me with God's wisdom, to remind me of who God is. And the Holy Spirit does come. And usually I love it when I, I worship and I, I listen to music because the Holy Spirit really comes when we praise Him, when we worship, when we say, thank you, God. And we worship you, God. The Holy Spirit really comes and gives us peace. Well, if you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, join us again at, at 1.30 for Zoom because I'm actually going to talk about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and fruits of the Spirit, right? And what that is. And so if you really want to grow and deeper in that, come join us at 1.30. And then last week, we talked about the Lord's Prayer, how the it's so it's important to pray, right? That God listens to our prayers and, you know, during VBS, you guys got that um, little jar, that family jar, family prayer jar. I hope you guys just write little notes in that, just little notes in there and then keep it. And then, you know, in a couple of years later, I would open up that jar and see, did God answer this? Did God answer this? There might be some you're like, oh, my goodness, he answered it. But there might be some it's like, OK, God, I trust that he will answer it and put it back in and put it back in that jar. I hope you guys use that. If you don't have a jar, like the family jar from the VBS, get a jar, just get any mason jar and create one for yourself and store in all your um, Bible verses there. You can even make into origamis. That'd be a really cool project to do uh, for yourself or even for kids too, maybe we can all do that together. But that'd be a great way to see how God has answered your prayers because he really does, right? So today we're going to go over about how Jesus talks about our possessions, our stuff, right? What does Jesus say about our stuff? So let's open up to Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21. All right. So if you're there, say there. Okay. So let's read verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to them, man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? Verse 15. And he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetedness. Covetedness is like greed, right? For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. For one's life does not depend on his stuff. Verse 16, and he told them a parable. So then now he's going to tell, Jesus is telling a story, a parable of a man. The land of a rich man. Now I have a little picture here of this man, and he has a lot of grains. During that time, uh, money was not just like, you know, coins, which some people had, but it was also food, grains. And if you had a lot, then you're kind of like a farmer, that you'd sell it and you'd make money out of it. So here... Verse 16, and he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. So he made a lot. He made a lot of grains. For us, grains could be rice, you know, just food. He was a farmer, so he made a lot. Verse 17, and then he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And verse 18, and he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grains and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have ample goods laid upon for many, many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20. So here you see, before we read verse 20, you see this picture here where he's making the uh, buildings for all of his stuff. And now that because he had so much, he is happy, he's rich, he thinks, you know what? I'm just going to live a really wonderful life because I have all this money and and I'm just going to just keep saving them and saving them and just enjoy my life, right? Enjoy my life. Verse 20, but, but God said to him, fool, fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? And so is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. So this is called the parable of the rich fool. It's not the rich man, it's the rich fool. 
So here's this man who sort of all of this and God is saying, you know, when you think you're so rich, you think you're on top of the world, you think you're in control of everything, nothing can change your life because your life is perfect, right? I mean, money, it is um, it is a, what's it called, a, a place of security. You know, it gives us security that we can eat, we can have shelter, and, and that is true, right here. But here he was had an abundance of it, but he did nothing with it. He just enjoyed it for himself. And God says, your life is going to be gone tonight. And what will all this stuff do for you when you die? Right? At the end, all this stuff in our life, they will all disappear. And at the end, we are left with only God and our soul. Right? You know, this is a um, reminder that you know, God does provide, and that's the message today, but also God provides for us to provide for others. And that's the second part of this message today, is that God is one that provides for all things that you need. Now, he doesn't give, he may give some people, you know, more than others, but you know, there's, it's called the word stewardship. How are you being a good steward of what you have? That's the lesson today is how are you taking care of the things God has given you, right? When we're greedy, when we're greedy, we're not taking care of the things God has given us. When, we, when God has given us many things, God calls us to be generous. God calls us to give to the poor. And we're going to talk more about that because that's what Jesus goes into. But here, the point is that this man will die. And when you die and when we all die, our stuff doesn't die with us. Like your house will still be there. Your cars will still be there. Your toys, your video, everything will still be there, right? When you die, it doesn't die with you. You don't take it to heaven or even to hell, right? So here, Jesus is warning people, do not be greedy. Don't look for things to fill your heart. Don't look for the best clothes or the best stuff or the best games. You know, it's great to have them. Right, But when it becomes your greed, when it becomes more important than living for God, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when it becomes sin, right? And he's warning and he's reminding everyone, don't let stuff become more important than God. But let your stuff give glory to God, being generous, providing for others through it, right? And that's what we're going to go on to. So let's go to the next uh, part of this story. Because a lot of times, you know, especially your parents, if you're going to watch them, they worry a lot about money, and which is understandable because they want you to have a safe home and good food to eat and good, and good clothing to wear. But when it becomes too much and that becomes more important than God, and that's where God is saying that you lost sight of me and that is not going to take you to heaven. And if you're not a Christian, it's not going to take you to hell. Right. So he's warning people, but he's also saying, be saved. If you're not saved, all of these things don't matter. Now, if you are saved and you are a believer, he's reminding you and me, don't worry about your stuff. Right. I will provide, but let that not be more important than me. Right. So let's read that. Verse 22. And he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And we're going to read from 22 to 34. Do not worry. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, and what will you put on. Verse 23, for life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. 24, consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? You see, the birds, they eat what they need. They just eat just enough. And you and I, we just need just enough, right? We need just enough. And that's what God is saying. He's saying, I will provide just enough for you. Don't worry. Like the birds. The birds don't worry. God provides for them, right? So verse 25. And which of you being anxious can add a single hour to a span of life? If then you're not able to do as small as a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? 
Consider the lilies, how they grow. Neither they toll or spin. Yet I will tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God saw, if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, very important verse, verse 31. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Now, my, one of my favorite verses is trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. But this is also my second favorite verse, uh, Luke 12, verse 34. I'm sorry, not 34, 31. Instead, seek his kingdom first, and these things will be added to you. No matter what in life, Seek God first. Seek God through your studies. Seek God through your homes. Seek God through your family. If you see your mom and dad struggling during the season, you know, and it's an important struggle, rather than being worried and anxious, what will that do for you? That will make you probably sick and concerned and not feel good, right? But in that time, rather than being worried and anxious, put that worry and anxious into prayer. See, it's not saying don't be worried and don't like, don't just like control yourself and say, you know, what? I'm not going to be anxious. And I'm just not going to worry. You know, you, you can say that all you want, but inside you will feel anxious and you'll feel worried. Now that reminds us when I get worried, when I get anxious, when I don't know what tomorrow will be, or when I'm, when I'm worried for my parents or when I'm worried for my children, you know, God is showing me, Sumi, you need to pray. So I, I'm open to being worried because worry shows me I need God, you know, rather than say, you know, I depend on God. I, I don't repeat myself over and over again or control my feelings. I ask God to change my heart and I read the Bible to remind me of his faithfulness. But I also pray and I say, God, I'm worried for my parents or God, I'm worried for my children and God, will you provide for them? So what we are called to do is when we are anxious, when we are worried, turn to prayer. I remember when I was a kid, my parents didn't believe in God, but they fought a lot about money. They fought a lot about their business. And when I read this, it gave me such peace because I would pray for them. And when things got better over time, I knew God was answering. And God has provided so much for my parents. And my mom knows that it comes from God. It's sad that my dad it doesn't. Because what I saw was God was answering my prayer as a kid for my parents. So your prayers are so important to God. And they're important to your family. So keep praying for them. Now we're going to wrap up to the end. So here's another verse saying, Jesus taught people not to worry because God provides our needs, right? That God provides our needs. You need to let that really set that in your heart, especially for you guys about your future, about college and, and about, you know, your studies, you know, honestly, during that stuff, you really got to trust in God and you got to pray. Of course, work hard, study hard, do your best. But when you're anxious and worried, again, turn to prayer. I remember I did when I was a high school student and I would pray over my tests. I would pray over my studies. I really needed God and God provided. So let's end with this section on Luke chapter 12, verse 33 to 32. I didn't get to read 32. So 32 to 34. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So God is saying, Jesus is saying, you know what? What God has given you, you know, give to others, be generous. You know, this is one way of not being greedy is to be generous, right? To sell your possessions, you know, give to the needy, you know, store up. When you store up things in your heart, when you store up things like 
you know, your worldly stuff, your material stuff, your video games, your your music and all this stuff, when they become so much more important than things of God, that's your treasure. That's your treasure. And when you're treasure when you treasure those things more than the things of God, then that's where your heart is, right? But when you say, God, you provided me wonderful music that I enjoy. Thank you for providing me games that I can play. Thank you for providing me for studies. Even though it's hard, I don't like them. But thank you so that I can become a student. I can learn. I can be educated. Right? When we see those things as blessings from God, th those treasures are actually not huge treasures to you because you know ultimately God is your greatest treasure. That God, that Jesus... The gospel of what he has done for us on the cross is our greatest treasure. There's so many parables and says that it's like a pearl that you found, that you 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 see it as, as precious to you and you cherish it, that that becomes more important, that the love of God, that the love of Jesus, that him dying on the cross for our sins is way more important, more precious than the things of this world. So when we have these things, rather than rejecting them, thank Jesus for them. But let him be your greatest treasure. And also, guys, be challenged to give to others. Now, I put out this uh, compassion organization because I actually want you guys to see a video and what they do because they provide for these children. And if your parents have not signed up for compassion or if you haven't, I hope you sign up. It's really easy. Just go to Compassion.org and you can sign up and provide financially. It can be with your parents, you know, pray about it with your parents. And maybe you don't have the money now, but maybe something you can do in the future. So it's a seed I'm sending out to you guys that you would have it in your heart to do for God that what we can do. Amen. Well, let's enjoy this clip about compassion and also the story about Jesus teaching about possession. So let's watch this clip. Current statistics indicate that nearly half the world's population lives in poverty, defined as less than two US dollars a day, and that one in six people live in extreme poverty, less than a dollar twenty-five. But poverty is not actually just about a lack of money. It's about a lack of opportunities, a lack of choices, a lack of access to all sorts of things that many of us consider essential to life. Poverty is about a lack of hope. Poverty doesn't have just one facet, and so we cannot fight poverty with just a single solution. And understanding this is at the core of Compassion's Holistic Child Development Program. Picture all the different aspects of your life your family, your work, your home, your faith, your community, as spokes on a wheel. And then think about what might happen if one of those spokes were broken or missing. It's no different for children living in poverty. If they are to develop and thrive, the spokes that make up their lives need to be strong and uniform. It's what drives Compassion's holistic approach, focusing on the spiritual, economic, social, and physical needs of every child in our program. There is no question that poverty is a complex matter, and so solving it is complex too. Complex, but not impossible. We can end poverty. We are ending poverty, one story at a time. Thousands of people came together to listen to Jesus' teachings. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share our father's inheritance with me. Jesus said, Watch out and be on guard against all greed. True life is not found in what you own. Then Jesus told the people a parable. A rich man owned land that produced many crops. He didn't have anywhere to store all of his crops, so he said to himself, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have so much stored up that I can stop working and relax. But God told the man, you are a fool. 
You will die this very night, and then what good is everything you have stored up? Jesus told this story as a warning for any person who stores up treasure on earth and is not generous toward God. Then Jesus told his disciples, do not worry about your life or your body, what you will eat or what you will wear. Think about the birds. They do not plant or collect grain, yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than birds? Jesus also said, think about the wildflowers. They don't work or make clothing, yet they are lovelier than any king in his fancy clothes. If that is how God takes care of grass, which grows today and is cut down tomorrow, how much more will he do for you? Jesus told his disciples not to worry about food or drink. Seek God's kingdom, he said, and God will provide what you need. God is happy to give his children the kingdom. Finally, Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. A thief can take away treasure on earth, but treasure stored in heaven lasts forever. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is our greatest treasure. Jesus left his place in heaven to live humbly on earth. Jesus obeyed God to set up his kingdom. We can give generously and trust God to provide everything we need. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoy the clip. I hope you guys enjoy that, you know what? God is not saying no to not, you know, to possessions, but he's saying to give it to the Lord. And one way of giving it to the Lord is to be thankful and the second way to give it to the Lord is giving it to others, right? So financially, uh, through our prayers, we can pray for compassion organization and that God will provide all their needs. So let's pray that God will use me and God will use you to provide for others, that whether it's financially or even through our prayers. And also let's pray that we will not be greedy for the things of this world, that the things of this world will never satisfy our hearts, but that Jesus will be our greatest treasure. Amen. So let's pray for that. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful message about your love for us, that your love is way more wonderful than the things of this world. But yet you do provide. You provide food for us. You provide shelter. I do pray for our parents during this hard season, for Kishu 2 parents, that you provide financially for their businesses and for their um, just their provision over their family, God, because you love us and you want to take care of us. But second, if you have provided these things, God, help us not to be greedy. Help us to um, start caring and praying for the needs of others, for those who are in the poor countries or even the city around us, God, that we would do what we can to provide for those around us, whether it's just even giving water to a homeless person or just even donating to Compassion.org. Lord, will you use us? Will you use Kishish too? That we will not just waste what you have given us, and that, Lord, may we treasure you as our greatest treasure, not the things of this world, that you will become more important and satisfy us more than the things of this world, Lord. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you guys join us at 1.30, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.